I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. Before we get to the action here today for the nine hole advanced playoff at this Super Tour event, we're going to check in with Joe and Gary. And they got some pretty exciting news about a world record attempt that's coming up in just a few weeks. Uh, Joe, let's start with you. Uh, what in the world are you going to be doing? Well, we're going to play an 18 hole course. It's a pretty short course in Rock Falls, Illinois. It's called Nims Park. And we're going to play as many holes as we can in 24 hours. We're going to be on our feet a lot, um, probably walking 40, 50 <laughs> miles throughout that time. So. That's ridiculous. So it's a 24 hour block that you guys are looking at. And the previous record, or the current record, is 1,310 holes. 1,310. And yeah. uh, I know the world record will be anything above 1,310, but do you have a personal goal in mind? We sure do. Um, 1,600 holes. 1,600 Correct. holes. Yeah. How many under par is that going to be then? Oh, well. 1600 is the right answer. 1600. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, um, a gentleman by the name of Mike Sale, I believe, is one of the current record holders. Have you had a conversation with him? We've talked a little bit online with him. Um, you know, it's quite quite a big feat to be on your feet that much, <laughs> play that many disc golf holes. So, uh, we definitely have uh, kind of done our research. Um, it's going to be hard, but uh, hopefully it'll pay off and uh, race more in for the sport. Now, he has the world record, so he may or may not truly be pulling for you guys, uh, but it is a pretty uh, warm and inviting disc golf community that we're in. What will be considered a success for you guys? Um, honestly, the, the, just the fact that we're able to do it in the first place and we have everything organized, um, the success comes with the awareness. I mean, of course, I'm not going to pretend like, you know, being able to break the record and get into the record books wouldn't be amazing because, uh, of course, it would. But truly the awareness and making sure people come out and maybe they'll see a couple of nuts like us on the course and maybe think about picking up a disc. <laughs> All right. Know? Now, so if somebody wanted to help out, somebody wanted to watch it, uh, support it in any way, uh, this is airing a few weeks before it happens. What can someone do to help you guys out? Uh, we have a website, basketcasesdiscgolf.com, and uh, we have an Indiegogo, and uh, it's going to be split between the Park District and our own club, which uh, does various park improvements. So uh, you can definitely check that website out or uh, you know, visit your local parks uh, and community and just help out there and see what you can do in your area. All right. Well, this is Joe and Gary. They're going for a Guinness world record. We wish them the best of luck. Maybe we'll check in with them after the event. Unfortunately, I can't be there to cover it, but we'll check in with them after the event. We wish them the best of luck. Now, let's head over to the action for the Super Tour First Flight Final Nine. Being off first is our leader, Alex Nymphs. This is going Alex to be... Nymphs from Mishawaki, Indiana. Woo! Woo! Second yeah. up on the box. Second up on the box, Zach Zanstra from Valparaiso, Indiana. There you go, and there's your introductions from our TD. Next up on the box from Montgomery, Illinois, took a fourth at USDVC and is the 2012 BGM's champion, Kyle Chapman. Fourth on the box. Salem, Wisconsin, took a first at the Prairie Open, first at the Tower Ridge Open, Jason McCain. And there you have it, this par 5, 706 foot opening hole. We're playing from 1's tee to 9's basket. Kyle dealing with his run up has a pretty good shot here. And again, we're playing to the double baskets that you find on hole 9. Those baskets off in a distance right there. 
Alex going with a forehand Z nuke. Looks like he turned it over a little more than he wanted. That is not the red basket that he was hoping to be going for. Jason with a very nice looking shot. And he's come up just a bit short. Zach has a Heiser route coming in. This is Alex for Eagle. And he's placed himself right in those guardian trees. And a layup. Up to the elevated basket. Lacane for three. Up and in for a four is Zach. As you can see, a very guarded pair of baskets here. Kyle makes good. Alex and Jason should have a pretty easy put in from where they're at. Fours all around here. That's hole one of our 2014 first flight, final nine. Alex going with the turnover shot here on the second hole. And he's almost hit one of our spectators. Zach with a very nice turnover. Jason is last to tee. Again, this hole is 466 feet. They're playing to the silver basket of hole one. We had Alex's approach shot go long and wide right. This is Jason's shot coming in. And he also looks to be a little bit to the right. We're playing to the silver basket. Kyle going with a hyzer out and around the tree. Looks as if he has hit that tree. Zach has less than 200 feet for his approach shot. And the wind has pushed it wide right. Kyle from about 65 feet is just wide right. Alex's putt for three is wide right as well. There is a little bit of wind that has picked up out here. It's about five to 10 at least. And Jason is also wide right. Kyle here with his opportunity for a four, puts in. Zach easily puts in for his three. And we'll see fours from Jason and Alex. We'll move on to our third hole. And after two holes, Zach has pulled into the lead here by one stroke over Alex. As you can probably hear, the wind is picking up as we've got Alex's disc coming right at me. Good shot by Alex. Third on the tee, we have Kyle Chapman going with a much lower shot than we've seen from the previous two throwers. This hole measuring in at 740 feet. And although it is 740 feet, I expect these gentlemen to be approaching this for a three. They're playing slightly downhill and have a little bit of a right to left crosswind. We have Jason LeCain throwing his approach shot first. It's going wide. And comes in within about 45, maybe 50 feet short of the pin. Second to approach here is Alex. Throwing a low shot. Wants to come up short of this water. Looks like he's about 50 feet short of the pin. After a brief debate between Kyle and Zach here, it looks like Zach is going to be throwing first. And he has also hyzered that off. 
and he is also short of the pin by at least 50 feet. Looks like Kyle is setting up for a big hyzer here. This is a great opportunity for him to get a stroke on the rest of the group. And just like that, he sticks it, sticks the landing within 12 feet. This is Zach for his three. Alex for three is just a bit short right off the front of the basket. Jason from 50 feet is just a bit right. Yeah. Crowd likes Kyle has put in for his birdie three and will gain a stroke on the rest of the group. Kyle here is on the tee. This is hole three to red three. 250 feet. Very good applause by the gallery here. Next to tee is Zach Zanstra. Zach yeah. gets the legs he needs, so to speak, and he is right there on the dance floor. Alex has a good looking shot and also puts it right there on this peninsula green. Very nice shot so far by three gentlemen. Last tee is Jason. Jason may have hyzered it off a little early, oh. Oh, and it is in the water. And Jason puts in for his three. Oh, and Zach has the headwind lift at just a little bit. Looks like he's gone about 18 past. And Zach is in for his par three. Kyle makes good for his birdie two. And Alex also makes good on his birdie two. We've got two birdies and two pars. Three ninety four to the pin. Maybe. About three fifty to clear the water. Good shot by Kyle. Alex is up second here. Just needs a little bit of hyzer. It's a good looking shot by Alex. And he's gonna be on the green. Zach with a great rip, it is turning over, just he's going to need to come straight down. And he is up and over. Jason's gone wide right, I think he's going to clear, however he does need to get onto the ground. Jason's going to have to put his back to the hole here and reach out. Some would refer to this as the Barry Schultz patent pending. He gives it a good effort. Just short of 60 feet to the pin, and Zach is right off the front of the rim. And Alex is also just short. For birdie, Alex. Oh. Correction. Kyle is just off the left side of the chains. It looks like all four of these players will be taking par threes. We're a little over halfway through our final nine.
Zach and Kyle are currently tied for the lead. Alex has fallen just one back. They're playing from hole six's tee to hole eight's silver basket. That was a nice shot. All three gentlemen within a few feet so far. Jason coming through with a very nice straight shot as well. And all four players are clean off the tee. Oh, it looks like Alex has hit an early tree. Jason Lacane has a very nice look at the basket from where he's at. And he's put it just about 25 feet deep of the pin. With Alex hitting a tree early, it is giving him a little bit of breathing room on the rest of the group here. As Kyle's put within 10 feet of the basket. Zach Zanstra, who is currently tied for the lead with Kyle, is going to have this for his approach. Perfect time to give our shout out to Bart Zantra, Channel Z DJs, huge supporter of the Disc Golf Guy video blog, also of my Patreon account, so very fitting. Give him our appropriate shout out. Thank you so much, Bart, for all the support throughout the years, as well as here on the Patreon account. Alex throwing a turnover that's fading on him more than he'd like. He's going to leave himself a tester at 28 feet. Zach is going to need this to stay tied, and he comes up just a bit short. Jason McCain makes a great putt from 28 feet. Alex for four is good. We will take a four, as did Zach Zanstra. Looks like we will have threes from both Jason and Kyle, assuming he puts this in, which I'm going to count. And he does. Kyle's our outright leader with just two holes to play. That's through seven at the 2014 first flight. On there. You have to go one side or the other. Pavilion. Pavilion is a, a mando on this hole. You can't go under it. You can't hit it. If you do, you have to repeat. 17 silver is. Come over this way. I'll show you where it's at. This is our eighth hole, measuring in at 676 feet. They're playing hole 14's T to 16's silver basket. Zach on the tee second. Clarification, they are playing to hole 17's silver basket. And Zach has come up short on the side of the path. Oh, what looked to be a nice turnover does get caught up by the tree for Jason. And Alex goes high and wide that somehow gets through the trees and keeps going. Very nice shot by Alex. This is, this is Jason's second shot. Playing that nice left to right wind. Very nice shot by Jason. Zach's second shot. Throws it very hard. He's just hoping to miss the trees. His dad's asking for it to get there and it looks like he's hit one of the limbs. Alex playing the turnover shot left to right here with playing the wind. He's asking for it to come in and it looks like he's going to be a little bit short of that silver basket. If Kyle can put this close, he can just coast in for the final hole. And it looks like he has landed a little bit to the right. After some personal deliberation, Jason goes with a forehand. This is Zanstra for three, and he hits the branch just above him. I'm not sure he accounted for that in his routine here. And Alex looking to pretty much just lay it up next to the pin here on this 
grassy knoll. Oh, left chain for Jason and it's going to roll. Thankfully for him, it's not going to affect his placing here, but definitely an unfortunate break for Jason's putt. And Kyle decides just to lay it up. He's done so. Within three feet, he will not be losing any strokes on this hole. And Jason running at it, and it sits down. Zanstra is off the top of the basket. He's going to be giving a stroke to Kyle Chapman and be tied with Alex. They'll both be now two strokes behind Kyle going into the final hole. Alex and Kyle both for easy tap-ins here. Welcome to our ninth and final hole here at this Super Tour event. And barring a complete mental lapse or breakdown by Kyle Chapman, I'm going to go ahead and say this should be his tournament. He has two strokes going into this final hole. Not a lot of danger here on this hole. Just 656 feet. And Alex has hit the tree but got a very nice roll afterward. He's going to be less than halfway to the pin. They're playing to red 15. Third on the tee here is Zach. Zach coming in straight at us. He's going to have a good looking shot to approach the pin. And last on the tee here is Jason LeCain. Jason, happy to be here. He beat out a friend and local competitor to him in David Heasley to get into this fourth and final spot. And there you have it, a few more shots and we will be crowning our champion. Alex will be throwing first. And he's come up about 80 feet short of the pin. Kyle's going to be next to throw here. And he has thrown it a little lighter than he'd like to, but again, he's got a few strokes to give here. Any remaining chance that Zach has to win this tournament, or at least high, he's going to need to throw this one in. And he's come up about 30 feet short of the pin. And we have Jason throwing from beneath the hillside and also throwing to about 30, maybe 35 feet from the pin. It's three. And just guarantee his placement as second. And now it'll come down to how Zach and him finish out. Kyle just needs to place this under the basket. He has done so and secured his victory. Jason for three, and good. Good finish for Jason LeCain. Congratulations on fourth place. If Zach can make this putt, he can take second place. And he does. Beautiful putt by Zach to secure second place. Which means we'll have Alex finish in third. And your champion will be Kyle Chapman. Great event by Alex. And for the final tap in. And the crowd erupts. Kyle Chapman is your champion. Everybody 
everybody yelling for his friends that are over here. A little congratulations from his card mates. All right, I'm back, and I am joined by our advanced champion, Kyle Chapman. Kyle, you put on one heck of a show out there. Uh, you didn't have the lead at all until the finals. Ta talk to us a little bit about what happened. Uh, I mean, we started off at Shandy Shorts, and then uh, it was kind of cold, but no excuse. I just wasn't throwing as good as I should have been throwing. I left a couple shots out there, a couple shots I wanted back. Then we played the longs. Same thing happened, but I shot a little bit better. Uh, starting this round at Round Barn this morning, I started off a little bit shaky, but the whole tournament I just kept my head up there, held my chin up, kept making them shots, made it to the final nine, and came back to win it. Yeah, you were a stroke behind. There were two guys tied for the lead, and you were a stroke behind going into the final nine, and it was about the third or fourth hole you got the lead and you never looked back. Were you uh, getting nervous at any point, or share anyone at home that's never been in a final nine, share with them uh, what your experience was? Um, well, I've been in the same situation, Bowling Green, two years back, down by two, came back and won that final nine. Just well, was confident the whole round, taking my time on my shots, picturing my shots before I threw them. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really too worried about the score, how far I was behind. And uh, that one putt after the lake for my deuce, I missed that, and that's the only time I looked up at the scoreboard, so I was tied. You know, I needed to make a couple more shots to win it and get the lead. All right, so big A-tier win this weekend. You've also won Bowling Green, so obviously everyone at home wants to know when you're playing pro. Um, I'll be playing a couple pro tournaments <laughs> okay. here, testing the water, see okay. how I do at the All pro right. level. That's awesome. All right, well, there you have it. It's been an amazing week here in Joliet and the surrounding area. Thank you to Patrick and everyone else that brought us here. Thank you to Extra Cameraman and Channel Z DJs and Disc Golf Fly Mart, Bart Zanstra, a big supporter of the event, as well as uh, Corey from Soul Flight. Thank you to those guys. Uh, Kyle, congratulations Thank yet you. again. And uh, to all the viewers out there, we hope you enjoyed the coverage from this weekend. As always, Click, like, share, do whatever you need to do after you're done watching, and uh, get involved in some of those contacts, contests. And if you really like it all, go check out my Patreon account, and uh, you can contribute in any way you want there. All right, for Kyle the Champ, I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, and we'll catch you guys at the next event.